Hi there, I'm Amy Ellis and this is So Modern Quilts. I am excited to bring you the next block in the Modern Quilt Block series and if you're new to the channel, my goal with So Modern Quilts is to inspire and educate quilters and aspiring quilters with tips and tricks at the sewing machine from my years of experience. And the Modern Quilt Block series is all about showing you how to explore and find blocks that you want to make and then make them. So <laughs> I'm giving you all those tools. If you haven't yet, go to the link in the description below and download the free block for this week and get started. So this week we are sewing floating. And I love the idea of the floating square in the center and also using some of the big scale prints. My pieces for floating are all cut and ready to go, so let's get started. As I was selecting fabrics for my floating block, I decided to go ahead and use some of the larger scale fabric that I've been stashing for this project, simply because I have a larger piece of fabric to show it off in and wanted to make sure that it got used that way and used well. So something to consider as you're selecting your fabrics for sure. Now this one has bias, and by bias I mean this edge is cut on the diagonal and tends to be stretchy when you're sewing. What I did to make sure that these are the easiest to sew with as possible is I hit them with a little bit of starch as I was pressing before I even cut, and I just use plain old inexpensive, <laughs> easy to find starch. So to get started on this block, I'm going to remove a bunch of the pieces from your view so that we can get started. These pieces are cut a little bit big so that you don't have to cut eighth of an inch because <laughs> as a pattern designer, that's one of the complaints I get most often is I don't want to cut that seven eighths or five eighths. So we eliminated that by cutting it up an extra quarter or eighth of an inch and then we're going to trim it later and I'll show you exactly when and where to trim. So we're going to take our background squares and I'm laying the square over the top, whoops, over the top of the triangle because I want to start sewing here and sew towards this point. And that's the best way that I have been able to get a good clean seam. So I want to make sure that you guys have success. There's been a few questions about the little piece that I put under the needle before I put my pieces. And that is merely just my personal habit of keeping the stitches happy as I start my seam. So it allows the seam to be nice and straight the entire length without any warbling of the first few stitches. And I've also been trained to keep something under the presser foot so that it's not rubbing on the feed dogs when I'm not using the sewing machine. So our block is started here and don't worry about this extra bit, we'll trim that later. The next piece we need to incorporate is this center square and we want to make sure that it's going in the right direction, right? Because this is right but this is wrong. So you have to make sure you're sewing in the right direction. Again, I'm going to sew one at a time and I'm pressing all my seams towards the triangles. So once again, just a nice quick seam. We're going to flip this over and stitch here as well. This is our center unit, right? And we're going to nest these seams here and not worry about the edges as much as these matching up and making sure that our seams are straight. So let's pin this first one. Whenever I'm sewing something with a lot of triangles like this, I definitely like to lay out all of my pieces and make sure that I have them where I want them. So I'm adding a pin here on the diagonal like I always do. And if you would like more info on how I pin or press, 
I have videos on both of those. I'll put those up above so that you can watch those as well. And I'm just adding one at the top and the bottom because I just don't want it to stretch too much. All right, so here you'll notice there's a really big seam allowance here and that's what we're gonna trim up later, so don't stress it. All right, so now we have our floating square with a little extra. We're going to use a nice long ruler to trim up this excess. And it doesn't have to be a lot to make a big difference, but it does make a difference. So if you can, using your 45 degree lines to match up can be helpful with your seam here. The most important thing that I want to look at is this quarter inch mark here and just making sure that I have it straight. While I'm looking here, I'm also looking on the other side of the ruler to make sure that my lines are square. So I'm going to trim that off. And like I said, it's not very much, but it does make a difference. And that's why, and that's the eighth of an inch that we didn't want to cut, right? We're lining this up with the quarter inch here and on the other side here to make sure we're square. So now we are ready to add in our big triangles. And this is where it gets fun, I think. So what I need you to do is mark the center of this triangle. And I just do this by folding. So I'm going to fold it and give it a quick, quick finger press here. And then this is where I want to line up that center mark with the, the, po the center point on this center unit. Oof, that's a lot of centering, but <laughs> it should go together pretty simply at this point. So I'm actually going to turn this over because I want to sew with these seams up. I like to read my seams, make sure I'm getting that quarter inch mark as I stitch it. I'm going to add a few more pins here because this big triangle is it could be very wily. <laughs> it could go wonky easy if we let it. So adding these pins will help keep things straight as well as the starch that I used earlier. So I'm going to stitch this in place. Okay, so that is looking good. I've got our point here not cut off and we're sewn all the way out to the edge of this square. So we're going to repeat and mark the center and then sew the opposite side. Here I've added one more pin to keep my edges lined up even after this one comes out. All right, so there's floating and the only last thing you may need to do is trim your block to nine and a half inches square. There are a lot of angles in this block, but I think it's a lot of fun to experiment and try. And you'll see in some of the layout options that there's fun things that you can do with color placement as well. So for floating, I made a few different uh, layout options as usual. And it's a lot of fun to see what can be created. So this first one is just the floating block. And I played with the color placement on this one to where there's a star. And my eye, even without it colored differently, my eye kept seeing it. But only like out of the corner of my eye, not when I was really looking at it. I wanted to highlight that with the color placement. And you could do this on just one set of four blocks like I did in this arrangement or you could do it on every other one so it's up to you. Next I mixed floating with star zone 
and you get some really unique shapes there. I like how they play together. And floating and triple third is a more of a, a modern points a sort of situation. It's really cool and unique. And I think playing with the color would be a lot of fun on that one. And then floating and cartwheel are also a lot of fun together. You get the square playing together. It's kind of like ribbon candy almost. Uh, and they play together really nicely. There's a lot that you could do. I would love to know your favorite option and it, or maybe if there's another one that you want to experiment with. I'd love to see that too or know what you're, know what you're up to with the block that way as well. If you haven't yet, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to the channel and be notified when the next video is available. I am adding a new blog pattern every week and I would love to sew with you. Give the video a quick thumbs up for me and share in the comments below what your plans are with floating. I look forward to stitching with you soon.